Hey guys, what's going on? It's Yas, and today I want to share with you some more empties. So the last couple of empties video, I think this is the fourth one, where I have been um, sharing with you products that I had accumulated over the course of like three or four months, and I just had way too many to put into one video. So this should be the final installment of those, as well as some more recent empties that I've sort of used up, or products that are leaving my collection for whatever reason. I have quite a bit of eyeshadows in this video because I recently went through a whole bunch of my eyeshadow palettes and sort of wore them over the course of like a week or so for work. And I realized that I, I wasn't gravitating towards these for whatever reason, mainly because of the, the color and just the um, the formula of the product. I just wasn't crazy about it. So a lot of these are going to be leaving my collection for that reason. So let's just get started. I have a couple of samples here. This was, oh, I don't have the back of it. This was a little sample that I got from Makeup Forever. It was one of their cream blushes. I can't remember the name of it. I did use it. I used it over um, a course of a couple of days. But then once I opened the packaging, it started to dry up a little bit. And the consistency was just a little off. So I think I wore this over the course of like three or four days, like over a long weekend. I like it. I'm not much of a cream product kind of girl my skin is pretty oily and I just feel like it just doesn't really last even if I were to set it with like a powder blush it just doesn't it just doesn't last for me it just doesn't do it for me so um, I was happy to try this because I love the Makeup Forever brand but this is just something I wouldn't purchase another sample this is the Chanel Hydra Beauty micro serum um, I used this I think over two nights it was a serum I couldn't really tell you if it did anything for me I only used it for two nights so it's kind of impossible to tell but um, but it was nice to try I just don't know if I would purchase the full size. I have two of the samples from Urban Decay. These were lip glosses. This one is in the color Kinky, and it's just a really nice, sort of like everyday color. Um, I really like these because they're not super sticky, at least the samples that I tried. They weren't really sticky, and I'm not a huge fan of lip gloss because of that fact. I love the look of like a glossy lip, but I just hate what it does. Um, when my hair sort of gets caught in it, or if I accidentally get it on my skin, it's just, I don't, I don't love it for that reason. But these two were pretty good, I did like the colors. The second one is Fail Bait. Now some of these, they're different sizes. I know some of them I got, um, I think as a freebie from Sephora through a purchase, I think. And then some of them I think I got through... I don't know how I got the other ones. Maybe it was the same thing. I thought maybe it was with a purchase, like my... Gwen Stefani palette, but that actually came with some other samples, not these. So I don't really remember how I got my hands on them, but they are really good lip glosses. If I was sort of more into glosses, I would consider purchasing these, but I'm not really a lip gloss girl. Next is this Ulta Contour Palette, and this is what it looks like. Um, this was probably, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the only contour palette that I purchased. I didn't get the Anastasia, the Kat Von D, I didn't get... What else is out there? I forget what else is out there. So this was the only contour palette I purchased just because I'm not really huge on sort of like overdoing it with my makeup. I wear my makeup, my makeup on a daily basis mainly because I just want to make myself look more polished. And I do like playing with makeup but I'm not huge on like baking and like super contouring and highlighting and all of that. That's just not my thing. Um, even when I'm doing like super duper, in my case like glam makeup for like a wedding or a party or something like that, I'm not going to really go all that out like I like to make sure I have a nice base nice eyes like just a nice basic color basic face I'm just not into the super highlighting and contouring and baking and all of that like that's just way too much so the two highlighters I mean you can't really tell what they look like because they've got like um, contour powder in them so they look kind of dirty and muddy but these contour shades to me were everything um, as you can see I pretty much used them up they started to sort of crack as I got to the bottom layer of the powder. So, you know, I didn't completely use these up like this to the point where the pan completely shows. Um, this is more like an accurate description. They were all kind of like this and then they started to break apart. And then once I was left with this one, this was the lightest one, I would use this lighter shade to sort of mix with the other ones to kind of create my perfect shade um, when I was tan and when I wasn't. So, um, I mean, this is pretty much used up, even though there's still product in there. I consider it, I consider it completely used because I'm not going to use anything else that's left in here. I will say that um, for my first try at like a contour pa contour palette, I did really like this. I would consider purchasing one in the future. I just don't know if I would get that much use out of it. I really like the Kat Von D one. It seems like a really nice one, but the pants aren't aren't. Um, 
replaceable so I would much prefer to get something like the Anastasia one where you can replace the pans but I'm not crazy about the Anastasia palette. The Lorac one also looks like a really good one as well and I know Tarte just came out with one but um, I don't know. I don't feel like it's a complete necessity. I have products that I use to contour with and to highlight so I don't feel like I need a contour palette. It's just not something I feel like I definitely need so I'll probably skip on it. Next is a perfume sample and this one's Versace Eros. It was a really good one. I really really liked it so that's the name right there. I hope you can see that. I think you can see that. I'm not quite sure if you can see that. So that's the name right there. I really liked it. It's such a beautiful scent. But if you know anything about me from watching any of these empties videos, it's that I love perfumes. I love trying out new scents and smelling them. Um, even little samples like this, I, I'll use them. Um, this is a good one. Check it out at Sephora or at your local department store and see if you like it. This is a face mask. And this is from Pericon MD. This is their Chloral Plasma. This is their Chloral Plasma. And there's not really much in there, but I don't know if you can kind of tell that it's sort of like a green tinted mask um, and it had these little beads in it and you will massage it into your skin until the beads sort of broke apart and the ma and the mask would turn from like a light like bluish kind of color to like a darker green color <clears throat> not sure what it was supposed to do for my skin but my skin looked and felt great um, I was using this product a lot before I started to break out again so I'm not sure if it helped to prevent that um, and just had my skin at a better balance and maybe that's why I wasn't breaking out as much as I am now but um I don't know I liked it I, I just know the products are really really expensive from this brand and as much as I feel some of the products from this brand are really really good it's kind of hard to justify the cost on every little thing so this is probably a mask that I probably wouldn't purchase I will probably purchase my glam glow mask over this um, but it was a cool one. I, I really like it. There's some cool technology behind this one. I liked it. Next is an eyeliner from NYX. It is the Tres, Tres Jolie Pitch Black Gel Pencil Liner. Um, and I like the concept of these. So this is a gel liner in a pencil form. As you can see, it's completely used up or almost completely used up. There's just a bit of a nub on there. Um, I use this a lot on my lower lash line and on my waterline. It lasted okay, nothing really lasts on my waterline. My eyes are pretty dry, so sometimes they tend to overwater or I have to put in eye drops and so they tear up. Um, once my eyes start to tear up, it's like the floodgates have opened. They'll tear up and tear up and tear up and I'll have smudges all along my lower lash line. And it pretty much happens on a daily basis because I think my eyes are so dry that at certain times my eyes try to like overcompensate for that um, and they become really irritated and so that happens. But um, this was actually pretty good for, I don't remember how much it was, but I'm pretty sure it was less than $10. And a drugstore product was re really uh, readily accessible to everyone. I feel like it's a really good one to try. And if your eyes aren't so watery like mine are, like mine are this will probably last you all day without a problem. This is a pretty good one. Next is like, I guess it's like a liquid lipstick. I got this, I believe, in an Ipsy bag a few months back. This is from Hikari. And this is their, oh no, it's technically a lip gloss. This is their Merlot Lip Gloss. Um, a beautiful, gorgeous color. It's a lip gloss that isn't, I don't know, it's kind of thick feeling and really pigmented. So I guess that's why I was considering it like a liquid lipstick. Um, but it is pretty sticky and heavy, like a, like a lip gloss. Um, but so pigmented, like you don't need a lip liner or anything with that one. Really pretty color, but I just don't like how it feels and how it catches in my hair or how my, or how my hair like catches in it. I can't stand that. Um, but as you can see, it is a gorgeous color. It was a really pretty color. I tried it out over the course of a week at, for like work and stuff, but um, I just, I'm not sold on it to want to keep it around. I think I'm going to pass this one around. I feel like I know someone that may really like this one. Next up is my e.l.f. High Definition Under Eye Setting Powder, and I don't think I've used one of these up in quite some time. I used to constantly use this and only use this for underneath my eyes. I'm currently using something else that I've been using for, like on and off for a few months, and I'm strictly now just using that because I've told myself that I'm not going to repurchase this, and so I started using up some of my other things in my collection, so um, I love this. It's a $3 product from e.l.f. and it just does amazing things for your under eyes. It's totally brightening. It doesn't sort of fall into my fine lines and creases and sort of make me look creepy underneath the eyes. This is a really, really good one. It has a bit of shimmer in it when you look at it in the in the pan or in the container, but it doesn't transfer shimmery. It just 
looks brightened under there. I really like this. Um, next is a similar product. This is the NYX Color Correcting Powder. I believe the shade is Banana. Yes, the shade is Banana. And as you can see, it's just a yellow, loose powder. Kind of like the Banana Powder from Ben Nye. Um, but the color is not quite the same and the consistency is a little bit different. This is extremely brightening. I feel that because I am a little bit of a darker complexion, I can't really get away with using this. It's really, really brightening. Even when I use the smallest amount, it's just way too much. It makes me look really ashy underneath my eyes and dry, like super dry. Like if you have oily under eyes and you don't really have a problem with like dry under eyes and fine lines and things like that, you could probably use this. And again, if you're of a much lighter complexion, you could probably use this. But if you're around my skin tone and definitely darker, like this is super duper highlighting and not in a good way. It's not going to look good. It's going to look really ashy and possibly even sort of almost gray toned on some skin tones and um, not worth it. So it's not completely used, but I just, I'm not going to be able to use this. I wouldn't even um, pass this on to anyone that I know that would use a powder like this because it's it's going to be too much for any of them. Um, so it's unfortunate, but I'm tossing this. Next is a mascara, and this one's from Buxom, and I've never tried a Buxom mascara ever before. It was okay. It wasn't, it's definitely not my favorite. The wand... The wand I feel is like a really good wand for when you want tons of separating. But I, you know, when I have, when I, for me anyway, when I have a mascara that does like tons of separating, you know, I don't expect a lot of volume, but with separation, I do expect length. And this just didn't do it for me. Um, I don't know, I wasn't crazy about it. I wouldn't recommend it. Next is a glitter eyeliner. This one's from NYX, and this is in the color... Crystal Silver and Gorgeous Sparkle, as you can see. Um, I wanted to use this mainly, like, I don't really use these type of products for, like, lining as liner. Um, I just don't like that look. I wanted to use it more as, like, all over the lid for, like, a really glittery look for, like, um, you know, a holiday or, or something like that. Um, but I've had these around for about, I would say, maybe three years or so. And so the consistency is a little off, and even when I first got it, I would remember that I would put it on my lid, and it would make my lids feel so heavy, and I feel like they sort of got irritated and itchy, so maybe I'm allergic to something in this, possibly, or it's just too heavy of a product to really use all over your lid. I feel like I've seen people on YouTube use this sort of in that way, um, and maybe just they didn't have a reaction to it, but for whatever reason, it just it never felt comfortable to me, so I'm just, I can't use it. Another product from NYX, and this is their Skinny Mascara, and I like this for my lower lashes. You can barely even tell like where the mascara wand is, it's so tiny, um, and that's exactly why I like it. I, I tend to get smudges on my lower lash line if I use a mascara wand that's way too big for underneath my for my lower lashes, so something like this is perfect. I wasn't crazy about it. I liked it. It was okay. It was, you know, affordable, and it's from the drugstore, but... Um, I don't think any of the ones that I've tried from the drugstore are that great. I've purchased um, a higher-end one. I've purchased the Clinique Lower Lash Mascara. I think that's what it's called, right? Um, I've purchased that one. I'm going to try that one out and see how I feel about that one. I know a lot of people really like it, so I'm hoping it's a really good one. And yet another product from NYX. I feel like NYX is the brand I go to when they have hot new products and hot new trendy products that I want to try. But I want to try something that's a little bit more budget-friendly versus the you know more expensive stuff. Um, so I'm always, always trying something out from NYX. This is their Epic Black Mousse Liner. And, oh, I can't even open it. Um, and you probably can't tell because it's all black in there, but I did use quite a bit of it. Um, just what's left in here, the consistency has sort of changed. I actually want to get that Inglot, I don't know what it's called, but it's a product from Inglot that you can use to sort of resuscitate like your dry liners. Um, and I've heard people also use it for other cream products. I heard you can use baby oil or olive oil, or coconut oil, or whatever the kind of oil, maybe even argan oil, or um, contact lens solution, but I don't feel like contact lens solution works good for this. I like using contact lens solution to, or eye drops to sort of revive my mascaras, but with this, I, I tried a couple of different products and I didn't like the way it was sort of coming out. So it's dry, it's done, I got my use out of it. Um, would I go back and repurchase? I'm not quite sure yet. I've picked up another one, a higher end one. I'm going to try that one out and see how I feel about it. Um, but if I don't love it, then I probably would go back to this. have here a, um, what are these called? These are like nail art pens, nail art 
polishes. I forget what these are called, but um, this is from Sinful Colors, I believe. It's all in black and I can't read it. Yes, yeah, Sinful Colors. And it's a black... It's basically a black nail polish with like a really skinny wand. It's really goopy, so it may not look as thin as it should. But it's a really thin wand, so you can sort of draw nail art on. I really like this to either do little dots or little lines, like a French or something like that. I'm not that creative. I don't do these amazing like designs on my nails but sometimes I like to get a little funky with it and try something new but um this got really goopy on me really really fast so I again it's a cheap brand from the drugstore I wouldn't go and purchase it I have here a lip gloss from Tarte I bought a set of these about maybe two maybe even three Christmases ago I don't exactly remember so I've had these around for a while these are supposed to be really nourishing for your lips and I believe they also contain something to like plump your lips. I don't usually get the plumping effect from products like this or like the uh, Buxom lip glosses but I do like the way that feels and I feel like it brings a sort of mintiness to your breath so when you're talking to someone they don't get any hotness. Um, this was a nice color. A bunch of them, they were, I don't know, I don't know how many I got in the, in the pack, but I remember giving some to like my mother-in-law, my mom, I think even my grandmother-in-law, like a few of the ladies in the family, even my aunt, I think probably got it, my stepmother as well. Um, one Christmas, like with, in addition to like the presents, just to add on to it. Um, these are pretty cool. I'm just, I'm not huge on lip glosses, so it took me this long to get through one of them. Um, but they're cool. So if you like lip glosses, definitely try out the Tarte ones. This is a NYX blush. This one, newer blushes, right? Yeah, they're HD blush. This one's in the color Double Dare. And I love a orange blush. I think it goes really well with my skin tone. But unfortunately, this one is super pigmented and not in a great way. I feel like it's sort of hard to blend out. Um, I've tried it with all different sorts of blush brushes that I have. And I couldn't make it work for me. So, unfortunately, this is a fail for me. It's got to go. I have a couple of eyeshadows here because I recently really started focusing on my eyeshadows and looking for ones that I feel like I can kind of get rid of. I got this one a couple of months back in an Ipsy bag and it is a collaboration between Ipsy and NYX. Um, you know, at first I thought I was going to really kind of like the colors but the more I used it the more I was like yeah I'm not crazy about these at all. Um, they're okay they're not the worst shadows I've ever used I'm just I don't love it. This is another NYX product. This is the NYX Love in Florence palette in Eat, Love, Be Fab. Again, colors that I thought I was just going to really like and some that are really good for like every day, but I'm not a huge fan. I don't, I just don't love it. This is a hair product that I know in the last couple of videos I mentioned the Nexus uh, Emergency products. They are amazing and I definitely recommend them, but this is even better. But this is something that's really only available to like cosmetologists. But if you can get your hands on it, you definitely should. Or if your salon offers this as a service, you should definitely get it. This is the Keratin Complex Vital Shot. I believe you can also get you can also get these online. So you would wash your hair like normal. They say you should really use a clarifying shampoo or you know go in with your shampoo twice to really get it nice and clean. And then you use this as a sort of leave-in conditioner and only this. On my hair length now. One is not quite enough, like one and a half is probably the perfect amount. Um, so if you have shorter, a little bit of a shorter hair than I do, you can get away with using one. If you're a little longer than mine, you would need two. The pack comes with eight. It usually sells for about eighty to hundred dollars, is what I've seen online. Um, it's amazing. It really helps to rebuild your hair. You can probably use it um, maybe once at week once a week at most but definitely maybe more like once every other week or once a month I feel like it's a really good amount of time to use this I like to use this um, especially when I'm heat styling and I've been heat styling my hair for a while and I really need this if I'm not gonna give my hair a break from heat styling I will go in with this a little bit more frequently and I feel that so far I've only used it twice I feel like when I heat style my hair constantly like now in the winter or I never really let my hair sort of breathe and just air dry naturally I always go in with heat to style it I feel like I, use it on, I can use it on a more frequent basis like let's say a couple of times a month maybe twice a month or once a month um, in the summer when I sort of let my hair breathe a little bit more I probably won't use it as often um, pretty pricey but I definitely feel like it does what it's supposed to do and your hair feels amazing the first time I put it in I didn't feel like my hair felt that great when I did it that first time like right after applying this and sort of going in and, and styling it you're supposed to you know blow it out and 
um, use your flat iron so that you kind of seal it. I didn't feel like it looked that great, but I did feel like it it felt healthier. But then the next time that I washed my hair and I didn't use this, I just used my normal stuff, then I felt truly what it did for my hair. So when you first use it, you might feel like, ah, oh, this doesn't really do much for me. If anything, I feel like I need to put some conditioner in my hair. Wait it out. Wait a couple of days, however long you wait in between washes. Because I felt like the next time I washed it was when I really saw and felt the results from using this product. So I definitely recommend it. A bit pricey and kind of difficult to get a hold of. But if you can, you totally need it. Two more NYX eyeshadow palettes. I feel like I got rid of a lot of my NYX eyeshadow palettes because those are the ones that I felt like, out of the ones that I have in my collection, were the ones that were being used the least and that the quality just wasn't there for me. This is the NYX Love and Rio in Cabana Boy. I was sold when I first purchased this and thinking that this was going to be like my everyday eyeshadow palette because these are just perfect everyday colors to use on a daily basis for work, on the weekends, no makeup, makeup look. I, the colors are exactly what I want but the pigmentation and the quality just isn't. So unfortunately I'm getting rid of it. Um, this was another one, this was a favorite when I first purchased it and I think this is probably one of the first sort of NYX products that I purchased when I first started getting into NYX. This is their 10 color eyeshadow palette in um, Caviar and Bubbles. I believe it used to be called Champagne and Bubbles way back in the day. Um, I purchased it when it was still referred to Champagne and, and Champagne and Bubbles, I think is what it was called. Um, but I ended up getting one, like I got one of like the first ones that was like renamed. So these are the colors, again a beautiful everyday palette, just the the formula just isn't quite what I expect it to be and I think because I do have some really good sort of like higher end eyeshadow palettes that I love and I use frequently that when I went back to checking these out I was kind of like underwhelmed. I just wasn't happy with them. They look really pretty and they look intriguing and you feel like oh I totally need this for like an everyday eye but the quality is just not there so why am I going to keep it around? I'm not going to use it. Another one. I got this one probably around the same time I got that one. Um, and everybody had it and everybody had to get it <laughs> and I got it and I did like it for quite some time this is the NYX Butt Naked Eyes palette it used to, it's a two part it's a it's a two piece um, palette the bottom part had um, blushes, bronzer and highlighter I believe I had used the products that I liked from that portion of the palette and then eventually I just broke off the bottom piece because it was really thick and I felt like it was just taking up way too much space so what I was left with were just the eyeshadows and I used them for a while at first um, before I got sort of like my other higher end eyeshadow palettes and I used it again recently I actually hit pan I don't know if you can tell in this color right here that's the only one but some of them have quite a dip in them um, again I'm getting rid of it because of the consistency and the quality of them I just I'm not loving it um, I have another one of these crystal liners from NYX this is in the color crystal gun metal again same thing just the way they feel on the eyes is it just feels wrong to me like something's wrong this is a lip liner from prestige in the color cameo I still have some in here so I'm gonna swatch it for you this is like just a really good everyday lip liner color. Um, I really like their lip liner in the color... Oh, it's their orange one, Poppy, I believe it is. And so I bought this thinking that it was going to be as good as Poppy because Poppy is a nice bright orange and I love wearing bright oranges. But I wanted something that was a little bit more neutral for like every day. But the consistency of this one does not feel like the consistency of Poppy. Poppy is a little bit more creamier, doesn't skip on the lips. It's just a really nice liner that I can even wear alone. This one I wasn't crazy about, but I did want to use it up and I did. Um, another eyeshadow palette from NYX. This is from their Love in Paris collection. And the name of it is Mercy Berku. And this is what it looks like. And I hit pan on that one. Um, and some of the other ones, like this one here, and this one, and this one too, and this one. On a couple of the other ones, I really did um, put quite a dent in it. Again, wasn't super crazy about the consistency of these, but I did like it when I first purchased it, which is why I used it so much. But now, I'm just going to get rid of it. Another eyeshadow palette, this one's from Wet n Wild, and I like some of the Wet n Wild eyeshadow palettes, not all of them though. And this one's in Melrose face 
and I thought it was going to be like a nice everyday one, but the consistency is just way off. This one that I actually hit pan in didn't take very long. The, it just sort of crumbled apart and yeah, it looks like I've been using it forever and I use it all the time, but, but I really didn't. I used it over the course of like, uh, I would say consistently for about a week and then kind of on and off for about two weeks after that with like other palettes. So mm. Another Wet n Wild palette, this one's Walking on Eggshells. This is like a cult favorite. And these colors just don't really work well for me. This brown one right here and then the pink one, they're really shimmery and just on me with my complexion. The way I like my eyeshadow looks to look like, these just didn't work out for me, so I'm going to get rid of it. And this one's another one from the NYX Love in Paris collection in Parisian Chic. And, oh, couldn't open it. And again, another sort of really nice everyday palette. I did hit pan on this middle color right here. Um, I use this a lot with some of these other palettes because I felt like it was a nice sort of um, crease color for me. Um, the, some of the other ones do have quite a dip in them as well. I used this for about, like on and off with some of these other palettes, I would say for about a month or so. I would kind of rotate them in and out to kind of really get a good hold as to which ones I wanted to keep and which ones I wanted to get rid of. Um, so unfortunately, again, not crazy about the consistency. The colors are really pretty and the palette itself looks pretty, but it's just not for me. And the final couple of products. This is a NYX lip liner in the color burgundy. I can't even do a swatch for you so you can see what the color looks like, but it was a nice deeper red to use under sort of any red color or even like a nudie color that I needed to sort of um, darken a little bit because maybe it was sort of like washing me out. I liked it. The NYX lip liners, a lot of them I feel like are pretty decent. Um, but not, definitely not my favorite, especially the pencil ones. Those are definitely not my favorite. This one's another one from NYX in the color Red Hot. Again, I used it all up so I can't even do a swatch for you. Just a typical red. And the last product is my Too Faced Bulletproof Brows. And it's a little container like this. You open it up like that. There's a mirror on this side so I won't blind you. And then you open this. And this is why I really like this about this product. You, oh, there we go. This has like a little door that you open it and then the product is right in there. Um, pretty, I don't know if you can tell, like I use that baby up. Like it is completely used up. There's some on the edges, but it's completely hard. I can't get into it. Um, but I love this feature of it because it's a waxy, it's kind of like a pomade, like the Anastasia Beverly Hills pomade. Um, it's kind of like that kind of a product. So you have something like this to really keep it closed and then you still have the cover to the packaging. So it really sort of helps keep it from drying out and I think that's really truly the only reason why I got so far in this product because it, it didn't dry out on me. I've had this for two years. It was probably the one I used most frequently. This and another one that I'm almost finished with soon. Um, they were kind of like my go-to like eyebrow products like on a daily basis that I felt like I can use up and I didn't feel bad because I was gonna have to repurchase something really quickly, like the Anastasia like brow is, which I feel like can run which I feel can really run out pretty quickly. Like these were like my everyday products. A really good one. Um, you definitely need to practice with it. When I first got it, I had quite a bit of difficulty in figuring out how to use it because it's such a rich product, a little bit goes a long way, it's extremely pigmented, and it can really make you have like stand out their um, brows so you have to be careful with it but I really did like it a whole lot so thank you so much for watching those are all my empties if you have any questions or comments please do leave those down below I appreciate you taking out the time to watch this video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys